I'm Mel Stewart, and this is the Swim Swam Podcast. Joining me today is a two-time Olympian, a three-time Olympic medalist, and a best-selling author of the book Blueprint, Olympian story of striving, adapting, and embracing the suck. Today we have Katie Hoff. She's back. I'm back. Thanks for having me again. I just want to say this, you're, you know, I'm, I'm a man of a certain age. Yes. I run a media company, but I spend way, way, way too much time on Instagram. And I, I'm, I'm not on TikTok. Swim Swam's now on TikTok. I'm not on TikTok. And here's the reason why Uh, I, I fear that if I'm on it, it's just, I'm going to go down a rabbit hole. It's going to be hours each day, but uh, this is like, this is some real estate you're really diving into. What's what, how long you've been on TikTok and what's that been like? Yeah. Well, first of all, yes, it is a massive rabbit hole, which is a fun rabbit hole. You just have to make sure if you have something that you need to accomplish, don't go on TikTok. Uh, but I, yeah, I've been on TikTok since I think like most people, the beginning of quarantine. So almost a year and I don't have that many followers, which was, which is kind of fun. I think, I mean, not to say that don't follow me, but you just kind of can be, do whatever, create whatever. And it's just been really fun and, and brought about some really cool experiences so far. On TikTok, you are Katie Hoff seven. That's letter K letter T Hoff H O F F seven. Same as your handle on Instagram, Instagram, you're robust, got a lot going on there. And you use the TikTok media on reels, right? I do real sometimes. Yeah, I did. My first reel was when I decided to play my husband on TikTok. I wanted to ask you about that, but it, it, I was going to tell you that my favorite. So it, here's the thing. Your, 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 your account is, is a, is a daily stop off for me. Oh, and, thank you. Um, and here's the thing. It's two things. One, I look at what you're doing in terms of training and of working out. I'm like, could I do that? And the answer most of the time is no. I the can't answer is yes. The answer no. is yes. <laughs> no, and I know, I know you. It's just like you're getting after it. I'm looking at this going, did you do this kind of work when you were a swimmer? I wish I had done more of this kind of work when I was a swimmer. You know, I think that's the whole brainchild of synergy, which we'll obviously talk about. But I, there's so many things that I did towards the end of my career, per my husband, Todd, that. I think helps so much. And so now I like to do them just so I can show others the way. And also I like doing the movements, even if they're hard. If you guys are listening or you're watching, just press pause, go to K letter K letter T Hoff H O F F seven, and just go through her feed, check it out. <laughs> you're you're going to want to see this. So yeah, it, it's now you're, you're doing work and I'm like, uh, physically I'm not judging, but I'm judging. You look super fit. You look like you, you look strong Thank and, you. um, but that's not, I mean, that's, that's, you know, I like to see that just so I can feel sorry for myself, but I also, but I love it when you do your husband, when you do your husband, it's awesome. And your, your husband, Todd Anderson, Michigan state football player, co-founder, right. Of, of your company, yeah. Synergy Dryland, And, um, I don't go to his account too often because it just really makes me feel bad about myself. Yeah, this is they don't go to <laughs> he's got, a, he's, he's got a big following. So let's build, we got a, talk about the elephant in the room. He's, his following is almost triple yours. And, okay. and it disappointed me because you have the Olympic medals. <laughs> um, yes, it is a constant. He loves to talk about that sometimes, but yeah, he, I mean, he posts really great things. He has, uh, you know, a, a great following with his sleep coaching and the crazy, some of the crazy things that he does. Um, He's just cooler than me. I don't know what to tell you. I have, I have no other, uh, if he was sitting right next to me, then I would probably put up more of a fight, but I can get away with it right now. I can, t- I can tell you guys are going to be married for a long time because just because of your media, it looks like you guys have fun. Just, and just so people will know, if you want to press pause again, you can go over to Todd Anderson 42 on Instagram on TikTok. He's Todd Anderson official, but, sure. uh, Official. Yeah, he's official. But no, you guys seem like you have fun together. Just it, it seems like you're happy. Yeah, I am happy. And that's such a, a cliche thing to say, but it's 
not no it's not as common these days to be like i'm happy uh and we definitely have our days um you know but i think the biggest thing during quarantine we learned was we have to just have fun every day and do something to make us laugh and smile and not take us ourselves too seriously so that's i think was the the start of i mean it started in quarantine when he literally dropped me on my head when he was trying to power clean me in one of our tiktoks and then you know starting to make fun of each other and and just get creative and so um it's just taught me that you just life is really hard right now for a lot of people it's hard for us at times and so uh tiktok has just been our way of laughing <laughs> just not taking ourselves seriously at all i think a lot of people you know we've done a lot of stuff on mental health and i think a lot of people have had a lot of challenges during the the pandemic the uh my wife is a therapist with a full practice yeah. um it is so i i understand intimately that a lot of people are struggling but i mean it's obvious but it seems like there's been a lot of people who are, you know, they're, they have authority in, in their field, like, like your husband, he has authority, like you, you have authority, you have, you've got Olympic medals and uh, you have a voice and you guys have like, you embrace this media at this time. And it looked like you just sailed through the pandemic. Uh, <laughs> well, that was the highlight reel. I don't know if we sailed through, but yeah, I, I think that that has been, I think a lot of times people, hear about these, you know, social media, Instagram, TikTok, and, and there's, it's gotten a, a bad rap for, you know, right now, currently, previously. And, and it, I think it's all how you use it. And I think if you use it in a way where you're sitting there and comparing yourself to people and, and getting down on yourself, then yes, I think it's, it's a terrible thing. But if you use social media to just try to send out joy and try to make people laugh and make fun of yourselves in the process, then I think it's one of the best things out there. Um, and so, so that's really what I've tried to embrace during this whole time when like, why not? And, and once you, I think once you break the seal of like putting something out there where you're like, wow, I look like an idiot. Um, and you put it out there and then it's received in a way where you're like, oh, wow. Like this is just maybe making someone smile during maybe a really hard day for five seconds. Mission accomplished. It's, um, I'm doing it wrong because so, I do scroll through TikTok and think, wow, I'm, I'm not that strong. I'm not that fit. I've got to get back to work, <laughs> Yeah, but, which I, is not, <laughs> not necessarily bad. But it seems like, you know, as a, as a first person standing on deck, watching your career, it seemed like you were under enormous amount of pressure. And, and now post-career, it seems like you're a different person. It seems like, it seems like you're happier now than, I, than I've seen in a long time. And I... I you know, how, how would you, you know, how would you like people to understand that? Because it's, uh, I'm wondering if it's like, it was a cliff, it was cathartic. It was like, you delivered your book and that was the moment. And like, when was the moment when you're like, I'm cool with who I am and this is what I'm going to be. And, and really embrace that. Yeah, that's a really great question. And I was the person that, you know, I wish I was, I had kind of embraced all of that earlier and gotten on social media and, and, had that fun because it's, it really has been a cathartic experience. And yeah, I mean, it, it kind of all was wrapped around the book. The moment I said, okay, I'm going to get my message out there. I'm going to be honest about how I felt about so many different things. I'm going to embrace the suck and embrace the toughness that happened in my career. It's, it's just continued to get better from there. And like we've talked about previously, I still have my days where I'm like, Oh, I just feel blue. I just don't feel it today. Um, but that's why we then we go make a TikTok <laughs> and shake ourselves out of it, you know? So that's been, I think for me, a really, really liberating experience for me with this book. And then to have the feedback that I've received of, of it doing exactly what I wanted it to do has been just even better. It's, uh, I've had a few friends who have published books and they're not all, they don't, they don't, Sometimes it's just, this is the crowning achievement and it's a, it's adoration about you and what you've done and people aren't vulnerable and they're not, they don't go there. You did. I recently talked to Rich Roll, you know, the host of the Rich Roll podcast and he's a big player, but you know, he came out with his book and it was the same thing. It's like, that is the secret sauce. You've got to, you've got to tell people all the hurt and you got to lay it out there. What's what, in terms of feedback, what, you know, what have you heard? I've received messages from athletes that, 
you know, it's empowered them to make a big time change from a team or from a coach. And I've had athletes say, you know, oh my gosh, like I didn't know that I felt like I was the only one getting that nervous before meet, or, you know, I don't feel alone anymore. Or is it just, just all the things that if I hadn't opened up and I hadn't been really honest about the, the tug of war of emotion uh, as any, any level athlete, or if I hadn't talked about, you know, different choices in my career, then I don't think it would have made others feel empowered to make a choice or just feel like it's okay to not be okay sometimes. And so that was, I think the thing that I felt the most naked and vulnerable about has been the thing that's helped people the most. And so that's just been, um, a relief number one, and then number two, to, um, know that that's the type of change that I can make in, in just not just one, but multiple people's lives has been, um, very rewarding. For, for people that are listening in, I'm, I'm sure you know, Katie Hoff, if you don't know Katie Hoff, you just know her by name and know her as an Olympian, Olympic medalist. It was, uh, first of all, it, it, your career was great. Your achievement was great. And it, I think it was, uh, you know, for being honest, it was really about expectations. And you were on the team with Phelps. The media dubbed you the female Michael Phelps. And it was a layer of pressure that was just, I mean, for obvious reasons, not realistic. And But you had an extraordinary performance across trials and the Olympic Games. And uh, what was the, you, in one event you were, what was it? You had fourth, but you broke the American record. Was that 200 free? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was just like, you start digging into the details and you're like, Katie brought it, but it's, uh, I've never had that experience. So I don't know how hard that would be. I'm, I'm, yeah. I feel some compassion for you, but I feel like I'm talking to Katie Hoff 2.0 right now. I, <laughs> I know I'm witnessing it. Well, thank you. Yeah. I think, and you know, we've talked about this before where I didn't even realize in, in the middle of it, two years after, three years after the weight that that had on my view and perspective of my career. And so much of that weight made me just want to turn and run and just flee and not be around my Olympic teammates or be on social media or post. Like, I remember it took me, it was a big deal. I remember I posted on Olympic day and I remember not even being sure if I should post like, that's how I, like, I didn't want to own this. And so I think having the book, writing it really digging in deep into details like that and being like, wow, like that actually was a, a, a good meet. You swam well, like, you should feel proud, you know? And, and I didn't carry that feeling for a really, really long time. And, you know, I think maybe not everyone goes through the experience of having being called the female Michael Phelps. Like obviously that was a very unique situation, but I think there's so much expectation out there, especially now, especially with social media, like kids have so much freaking pressure on them. And so that's another thing I felt like my book has shown, Hey, how do you, how do you react to that? And maybe here's my mistake of how I reacted to a failure and here's how I advise getting back up from it. And it's, facing it head on book is blueprint an olympian story of striving adapting and embracing the suck which is a great title you can you can get it now on amazon and you know i think being a bestseller is sort of like winning a gold medal it's like it's sort of <laughs> you know there there no there are these moments in life where you want you know where there's achievement and you kind of you have to acknowledge that that's a big deal you know the first thing you see when you when you pull it up is four stars uh but you know you know do you feel like you've owned that? Do you feel like, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm, do you, do you like wake up in the morning and go, I'm the best selling author. <laughs> I don't know about, I don't know if I do that. Uh, but you know, I think <laughs> I do have it on the back of my wall and it does say bestseller. So yes, I'm very proud of it, but I think, I think I'm more proud of what it's allowing me to do in terms of telling my story. You know, I obviously like great, you know, certain amount of people bought the book, but my whole reason for buying the book was not to, you know, break any records or, or be bestseller. It, it was just the reactions that have continued to come in that have continued to solidify. Okay. You, you did the right thing in, in writing this book. So I'm going to ask you a very vulnerable question. It's um, oh, no. and, and it comes to mind because it's in, in, in talking to rich roll, it's, uh, you know, he was, 
I was with him through the process. So we're the same age. We're peers. And like, I got the galleys for his book. He launched his podcast. His media started blowing up and he, he was everywhere. And um, it's like, it was very clear that he was, his, his success was just on this trajectory that was going straight up. And he kept, he always, he, he, in personal conversations, he would make apologies. And, and what I was hearing from a personal standpoint didn't match what I was seeing. And he didn't, and I didn't really find out until years later. He's like, there was a period of time where business was rolling, things were successful, but I was, I was so invested with time, energy, and money that it, it, was, it was a struggle for him. Like financially, it was a struggle. And then it turned a corner and it took off. Um, have you gone through that period? Have you felt that period of time? Have you felt like, is it, cause you and your husband are like a little media empire. <laughs> um, I don't know. Thank you. I don't know about that. Um, in terms of just feeling, yeah, I think I, you, are you, do you mean in terms of like media or in terms of like, in terms of like it, it's, it, I think it was really hard right when he was right when he was starting and he started to take off. Mm. And, um, but I didn't know like what was going on with him. Like he was doing so much work behind the scenes. He, it just looked effortless out front. How much work's going on behind the scenes, oh, Katie? I get your question. A lot of work, a lot of, um, a lot of juggling, a lot of late nights. Like, uh, it was Saturday mm. at 3 PM, uh, last weekend. And we just had, we have this six foot long whiteboard in our living room to keep track of everything and put goals and uh, like roles. It's really cool. And we like met, it sounds so cheesy, but actually have, we met in the hallway and just gave each other a hug. Like whew, we made it through another week. And, and that's how it is right now. Just juggling a lot of different things, but that's, it's really, really cool to be able to do it with your partner, which I would have never, ever expected. And, you know, obviously I have my things going on and, and he has his, uh, but to be able to share something and, and be so invested in something that's your own uh, really outweighs all the work, even though yes, behind the scenes, it's some blood, sweat and tears going on for sure. And you're, you're talking about the company you guys are co-founders of, Synergy Dryland. It's, um, that's a, you know, it's a lot's happening in your life. How's it going? It's going really well. Um, you know, I think it's crazy to think back that a year ago I was starting to just do, you know, I, the main thing I wanted to do when I thought about, okay, what can I do, contribute to this? Uh, webinar series that CG Sports had started and a lot of people were going to talk and I'm like no I don't want to talk like I want to give these kids something to to just like sweat and do something and take out their frustration and like oh that's what I would want to do you know and to have that come literally the next month my husband and I were sitting at a table and we're like wrote down the word synergy we're like that's what we want it to bring in more than just movement. We want it to be about the sleep and the nutrition and the recovery and all those things. And we wrote it down and we like showed my parents, we we're like, what do you think of that name? And they're like, seems good. And I'm like, yeah, it seems good to us too. And then from there built out our entire platform our and, and the response of individuals, teams, and, and now them getting back in the water and feeling the strength from that has been unlike anything I could have ever imagined and just continues to grow from there, which it's, it's just that people say you hear that story, right? Like, Oh, it just happened and it made sense, but it really has all come together and made sense. And that doesn't, it hasn't happened a ton in my life where it's just like, it just makes sense. Perfect. <laughs> so I mean, I, it's really cool. a lot of Olympic peers with medals, um, you know, they, they take all sorts. We, we have all sorts of different iterations in life post-career. People who, who, who move beyond and, and, and start careers and something completely unrelated. And then a lot of people who stay around and they're, um, or they have, they have, they have a, a, a toehold there. But did you think that you'd be a business owner? What do you think, Todd? Do you think you're a business owner? Todd just came in. Todd just came in. He just came in. We, we, were, we were talking about how much of a star you were and, and that your following is almost three times the size of hers. We just want to call it out publicly. <laughs> this must be a short conversation because that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, the question you'd ask us, like, did, did we you ever think that you would be a business owner with Synergy? Uh, your answer is, but my answer is 
he is way more entrepreneurial wired than I am. I, I think coming from swimming, coming from, you know, the rigid, like the coach is telling you what to do. You do what the coach says and you go. And, and that's how I've always thought I performed best. Yeah. And so to have this pivot of now it's like, no one's telling you what to structure. No one's telling you what to do. It's yeah. us creating it. I think it was like really organic too, because so many people reached out to us or had questions and we were able to help with like little things here, like mobility or just range of motion, flexibility. And so I think there was a big need for it. So we kind of just fell into it. You know, we just kept getting asked more questions and, you know, we were seeing that we were able to help people. So it's not like we, we didn't sit down and think, okay, how can we make a business? It kind of, you know, just formed based on what people needed and how we could help. Yeah. It's, we were talking about some stuff off camera. I don't know if you can talk about it here. It's about what you were doing and why you're late. If, if you can't say, Mel, we can't talk about it. Oh, no. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> I also, I uh, medical sales, so I was, a surgery ran over. So uh, it kind of helps with the, the dry land programming too, because I'm in surgeries all day and see the, the rotator cuff from the inside out. So, oh. <laughs> well, so, wait, 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 wait. so uh, show, they're flayed, people are flayed and you're looking in and you're saying, this is what you, this is, uh, it's more of a, usually in the scope. So, our, the scope. okay. So, you know, it's, it's crazy to see a, a lot of athletes that we work with, you know, just, um, how young they are, how many issues they have. But I think also, you know, with some of the preventative new, you know, new age cutting edge exercises, like how much of this stuff can be avoided with, you know, proper stroke mechanics and getting the right ranges of motion and not compensating in the water, you know, taking care of that out of the water and then making sure we're not compensating in the water. Yeah. Do you guys have, so this is, this is, this is a lot of work. And then on top of this, you're managing your TikTok hug. and Instagram account. We've already dropped your handles. We did that at the top of the show. Yeah. Yeah, but that's so, the most so, pressure. All this is easy compared to TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> that's why the pressure's at. Yeah, <laughs> I'll bet. It's yeah. uh, no, so it's a. Um, so I was I was given my examples of what I liked, and part part of it was the the insecurity of I was just watching Katie. I'm like, I can't do what she does. She's so fit, but the I like it when she is you in her in her videos. Yeah. Do you that's, like mine that's, better that's than weird. you like his? That's weird because that's my that's my <laughs> least favorite part. <laughs> the funny part is everyone was asking us. They were like, "So, um, did he know that you like? Were you guys okay with what the other said?" I'm like, "He's behind the camera, so like, <laughs> obviously, if he didn't like it, he would press stop." Yeah. <laughs> so, you put that's going to actually make your spouse mad on social media before they know. That's going to be a big problem. Yeah, there's other issues at play. <laughs> it seems like you, you guys have a healthy relationship. It seems like every. It seems, seems like it's. Um, seems like you guys have it going on. The uh, so I did. I did want to ask you this. What What is the the I'm busy right now challenge? Because it's like I was trying, and it's funny. I'm like looking. I'm like I'm looking on your phone. And I'm like, are the numbers going to pop up? <laughs> <laughs> so they're gonna oh pop up God. i'm gonna write them down and start texting them Some that, that didn't happen. let me i think your phone is, is filled uh, for sure but uh yeah i mean it's a tiktok it was actually really early on that i saw you know different people uh calling and, and having them answer but it i mean first of all the work behind it because everyone thought something was wrong with me so he'd be behind he'd be videoing yeah. i called beisel like 18 times to the point where she was like are, did you die? Like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> so that's why you saw her just so frustrated when I was like, I gotta go. Yeah. Um, but it, it was a real, it ended up being more than I ever thought it would be in a fun challenge because each person that I called, I then got to, you know, talk for another 30 minutes and catch up with Schmitty or Kate or, and so it was, uh, it, it turned into just like, a, Oh, I'm just going to catch up with all my friends. So it's, um, no, it's fun. It's just, and it's I weird have, because it, yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. I had to film like 18 <laughs> non picking up FaceTime he, calls. He was He's so like, <laughs> film this, film this. And it's just ignore, ignore. Because, you know, like most people don't answer the phone. So, I mean, we have so many outtakes of me just filming the blank phone. <laughs> you know, I was like, please come one more time. They'll answer, I promise. <laughs> well, it's a, we're not at a point where we're coming out of the pandemic. It feels like it's burning out or we're, Let's just let's just hope that we're on the back end of it. And uh, your your company came at the right time, and it's uh, so. How do you see this this growing and evolving now that we're we're in the last iterations of the pandemic? Yeah, I mean, I think we've you know we've definitely had to kind of evolve from 
you know, do we have having kids do stuff just at home and then having them do stuff at the pool or at a gym. But I would say the nice part is that virtual can happen anywhere, anytime. And, you know, we, we have this new app that we just launched. So kids can, I mean, they can log into the app. They can see the videos of, of me or him doing the exercises. Um, and we can actually have accountability where they can put in their reps. Um, we can change it up that way. So yeah. I don't feel like the cool thing is I don't feel like it changes that much, um, yeah. you know, coming out of quarantine. I think it kind of like pushed everyone forward and, you know, like the virtual stuff was always an option, but people just weren't, they couldn't really wrap their head around it before quarantine. But I think people have realized, you know, with the virtual stuff, there's always going to be advantages of training in person, but um, you have such, such access to people all over the world with the virtual stuff. So you can go to experts that aren't close to you when you're very limited when you're training in person, you know, whoever is in your town, like that's who you're going to work with no matter what their specialties are. So I think it's really opened it up for people. And um, it's been cool working with different people that we'd never cross paths with otherwise. Are you guys a Peloton family? We are a Peloton family. Yeah. <laughs> uh, are you? We sold, are no, we, we, sold, we, we sold. Then we sold our bike and we got the treadmill. But the treadmill is supposed to be here, and they kept they kept pushing it back thirty days, thirty days, oh. thirty days for delivery. So it's a um, no. It's working out at home. Uh, we transformed a bedroom over the pandemic into you know a training room, and it's uh, yeah. Now this is where it's at, and I think that if it's if it's curated from experts that's the best way to go. You want you, that's what you want. For sure. Yeah. I mean, like you said, even at, you know, we're not in, in the sport anymore, but not having to commute somewhere and drive there and like it, it saves so much time and, and you have access to anybody. I think that's something like, that's why you thought of Peloton because you're working with some of the best instructors in the world at cycling and running and they're right there. And it's, it's very similar to, to what we do, where it's just, we log on a Zoom, we see their faces, and we can see everything we need to in terms of form and, and coaching. It's been a big year. So many things have happened for you. And now Todd's waking up next to a best-selling author every morning. I, I, <laughs> it's, it's tough. It's high expectations. It's, it's high expectation. I, I don't know. I, I, have you published a book? No. I mean... I, clearly, I need to. Right? <laughs> he needs to to catch I up. I don't have a leg to stand on right now. That's social media. He's beating me at that. <laughs> yeah, that's so. There, you have you have some balance right there. But it's a uh, it, no, it's been a big year, and we're rolling it. We're rolling into um, in swim and our family. We're rolling into Olympic trials and Olympic games. Um, what do you guys think? I mean, I'm 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 bullish on everything happening and everything going well, but it's. Uh, I, I certainly hope so. It's good for it's good for what we do. Obviously, it's swim swam, but it's I do think that you're gonna you're someone who's going to experience book sales and expansion of your business if we do have the games in it. I'm 99% sure we will. Yeah, I, I feel the same. I mean, just part of just me feeling that way is friends and having friends still swimming and wanting them to go to the Olympic games and compete. And even some athletes we work with that are have trial cuts and, you know, getting to go to your first trials and getting that experience under your belt is so huge. Uh, plus I want him to be able to experience an Olympic trials oh, and the Olympics. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think if things continue to go the way they're going, I'm hopeful. That's all I can be is, is hopeful. Um, but yeah, it'd be, it'd be really, really neat to, this would be, you know, in terms of trials, this would be the first one that I would go to where I wouldn't be competing and I would feel good about it. You know, in 16, I wanted to be on the other side of the planet when it was going on, but I think this time would be a really neat experience to go there, have my book with, you know, sitting there with Faisal and her book and, and getting to see our athletes compete, getting to see friends compete and showing my husband, yeah. you know, that world that he didn't yeah. get to be a part of. I'd be pumped to go because I've, I've met all Katie's friends, kind of heard all these stories like third hand and it'd be awesome just to experience the other side and just see like the experience that she went through when she was younger. I was meandering. I meant to ask the question, are you going to trial? So I guess the answer is yes, you're going. Yes. Well, yeah. I mean, hopefully hopefully they, if they let us, yeah. you know, with the spectators and all of that, you know, so what I'm hearing is the, the answer is yes. Trials as every trials. I mean, I, I was at your trials and, you know, it, if you remember the first trials, swim swim had a, we'll, we'll call it a, a 
an adult uh, restaurant location <laughs> to, yeah, back in 2008. <laughs> heard about that like I'd always heard like yeah like the coaches and like the you know everyone like goes to this place but obviously like I was too young I was competing so I would be interested about this new world that happens yeah, on the other side. we always have a location yeah it's much it's it's a whole lot more fun to show up when you can like you know you take a shower and clean up and put on some nice clothes to to go attend because it's it's a big social scene yeah. yeah, it sounds awesome. It sounds like just a big, massive reunion with a bunch of swimmers and swimmers and past Olympians, you know, current Olympians. So, yeah. I'm so we're going to we're going to pull you guys in and talk right before we go to trials and, and check on you and see what your plan is for trials, because I'm sure if you can attend, if we can be there to watch as spectators, you guys are probably going to be doing some interesting stuff there. That's my guess. Hopefully, That's the hope. Yes. Um, so I'm not not sure what it will be, but yeah. Um, We'll, we'll definitely have to keep you updated. And you're going to have to give us some some analyst predictions or insights into what you think will happen. So you're going to have to brush up on who you're who's going to who's going to be in the semis and in the top eight. Yes, I've actually been like since I've had my you know kind of a resurgence back into the scene. I've I've been keeping up uh, with with certain people. So I definitely have my favorites and my predictions. That's for sure. We'll let you unpack because you're going to, says Beisel's looks like she's going to be in the, in the seat next after Rowdy's gone. This is going to be his yeah, last Olympics. So it's going to be, so you get to do your, your analysis work and we'll, we'll just compare and we'll see who's better. We'll rate it here on swim swam. <laughs> I feel like it's going to be her. She is an yeah. expert at this point, but that's a lot, of energy to do. That's a lot. <laughs> but no, I mean, obviously she's amazing, but um, yeah, I, I think I've, I've always been kind of a swim nerd. I always stopped the results and the splits and all that. So um, I bet I could, I bet I could give her a run for her money. Let's just say that. Okay, good. We'll have you back before trials and hopefully Todd will be here and not come into the podcast late. Yeah. You guys have any parting thoughts? Uh, I would say, um, just thank you to you. You're, you're so supportive. And, um, just thanks for asking all the questions and highlighting just the mental health piece of things. That's, you know, a big part of what we think about as human beings, as well as, you know, something we highlight at synergy and, um, we'll just keep trying to laugh and make others laugh and we'll all be in a good spot. Guys, if you're listening out there, it's, it's Katie Hoff, bestselling author, blueprint an Olympian story of striving, adapting and embracing the suck. And I, I think everybody who's gone through a tough time, this can this book will speak to you. Definitely pop over to Amazon. We're going to put the link in this post when we go live. Guys, thank you very much. Thank you so Thanks. much, Mal. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.